Hi everyone. Oh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we're super excited because we're going to be talking about cooking with kids with the brilliant Naomi Hansel and her brilliant helper Cameron. So if you've got any questions, pop them in the comments box and we'll get through as many as we can, whether they're all questions, cooking with kids questions or questions about what Nay's actually doing. Um, and if the technology works, it's been a bit glitchy this morning, um, then hopefully we will have Nay any second now. Hello. Morning. Morning. <laughs> Hi, Nay. Hi, Cameron. How are you both? We're good. Yeah. Good. Nice, nice to have help, actually, today. Yes, it is. It's really lovely. Um, and um, it's the first week of your school holidays. Is that right? Yes. One of nine. Week one of nine. So we're sort of eyes down for, yeah, a nice summer, actually. Just need the sun to come out. Um, yeah, nice to just have a change of routine, actually. Yeah, absolutely. And you're going to be cooking, both of you, together for us today. So what are you going to make? So we're going to do, we've got eggs on the go first because eggs are really useful, actually. And um, so for me, cooking with kids is two things. It's one is cooking nice things that they'll eat. And then the second is actually encouraging them to do a bit of cooking themselves. So uh, Cameron is omelette expert, having made them for quite a while now. So I'm going to do some frittata and put those in the oven. And then he's going to make omelette and I can sit back for a minute or two. Yep. Oh, marvellous, marvellous, brilliant. So um, for everyone watching, if you've got any questions, as I say, pop them in the comments box. Um, I'm going to leave you now and let Nay and Cameron get on with their cooking. Okay, see you in a minute. So what we're doing today is, so eggs are such a great nutritious thing to cook with. They are easy, they're quite cheap, they're easy to get. So the first dish I'm going to make is something we're going to cook in the oven. And it's a perfect, it's it's. Um, frittata muffins so they are eggs some filling and we bake them in the oven they take about 15 minutes to make and they're good for a snacky lunch they're good for going in a picnic box they're good for just taking out and about um, and they freeze and you can make them in advance so I'm going to make these and then I'll step back for a moment or two Cam's going to do what he's excellent at which is very nice speedy omelets so let's talk frittata to start with there's three ways of frittata actually Georgie will post and Ellie will post the recipes up for you but we've done these um in the past actually as a whole big size frittata so for your frittata you need the following which i've got set out on the worktop here uh, you need some eggs actually um, if you've got hens which are producing nicely for you then totally brilliant if you buy them then do them like everybody else i always use large eggs um, just because i just do um, i've got six eggs in a jug here just give them a bit of a whisk and then you need to season them with salt and pepper and that's quite important actually otherwise if you don't add a little bit of salt your potato won't taste that exciting so maybe just like a quarter of a teaspoon or a good pinch of salt in there uh, some pepper nice few grinds of black pepper and, and then that's the base you know of your potato so there's different ways to cook it you can do them on the top if you're doing it on the top you'd use a pan like this one which is the Arga uh, cast aluminium induction saute pan so it works on all cooking surfaces including the induction it's got a um, removable handle which is really handy because we would do this so you put the heat the pan up with a little bit of butter pour the eggs mixture in pop your fillings on top we'll come to in a second and then cook it and on the top on the boiling plate till it comes about two-thirds of the way up the pan you can see that it's quite well cooked in the middle but still running on top and then you put that takes maybe like five or ten minutes then pop it into the very top of your roasting oven where it will grill the top, it uses that natural grilling from the top of the agar. Um, and after about five minutes, it's all nice and bubbly on the top. Slide it out of the pan. This non-stick is so good, it'll just slide out on its own. Cut it into six sections and that's lunch or supper. So that's how we do it with a pan. Um, we're gonna come back to the pan in a second to can, but I'll put it on there to preheat for for a minute. But mine today, I'm gonna make, um, muffin size one so this is the Arga six hole port Marion muffin tray and um, all we're going to do is line each of the um, little muffin holes with a piece of grease proof paper um, and you don't need to worry about buying the nice tulip shaped ones that you can get in the supermarket just take a square of grease proof paper the compostable one is really nice actually um, square of grease with paper and just squash it in. In a minute, the frittata mixture is gonna hold that down. The other thing you can do with grease with paper, if you're ever struggling to get it into a tin, is just scrumple it up into a ball. 
and then it's much more malleable. That's good for lining all size tins and things. So we'll pop these in here. I'll start filling them probably actually so that we can get the paper to go in. You could trim it if you wanted to, but that would just be fine. And then it means they're in their own little wrapper already to take them out and about with you if you want to. There we go. Good. Right, so pour in the egg mixture and then we're going to add our toppings on top. So the recipe that is that Georgie and Ellie will post is for if you're using it doing it in a pan I would say do eight eggs if you're doing it in the muffin tray use six and just adjust the filling quantity and then if you're doing it in the mini ones which I'll show you in a second there we go we've got five today overfilled one so then filling wise so we love just bits and pieces from the fridge to be honest some cooked new potatoes are good to pop in. We'll probably find one of these will overflow because I've put too much in one and not enough in the other, but you know, life's just like that, isn't it? Some frozen peas. They can be defrosted if you want, but they don't have to be. You could pop in some sweet corn. You could pop in some bits of mange too. You could put in a few peppers. For a bit of colour is nice. I quite like chunks of feta cheese. That's nice too. Um, feta is really good, I think, with children as well because it doesn't look, it doesn't taste that strong. It's just salty. It doesn't look that scary or strange. It's nice and clean and white. It doesn't look like it's got any bits of anything in it. Um, and then some cheese. So today we've got Wensleydale just grated up. Some lovely friends came to stay with us recently and brought us this huge, beautiful block of Wensleydale cheese. So we've just got some of that to go in here. I don't think Sarah will mind. Matthew might. There we go. So you could give them a little grind of black pepper on the top if you wanted to. So then we'll bake these. For these, we want quite a hot oven, so they brown nicely on the top. So we're going to cook them in the roasting oven for 15 minutes. And then in the meantime, Cam's going to make his omelette. This tray fits onto the runners, so I haven't got any shelves in my arbor at the moment. There we go. Great. Right. Let's set the timer for 15 minutes. I've got my Arga four-way timer, which, thank goodness, will keep me on the straight and narrow, hopefully. Um, right. Cancer, do you want to talk omelettes? Yeah. Cool. So I need to do it. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> so you've got an overhead camera that Ellie's going to turn on. There you go. So there's your ingredients. You need a bit of salt. <coughs> a bit of pepper as well. Yeah. So tell us, tell us what you've got in your ingredients as you put them in. Okay, so we've got some eggs, we've got some butter to grease the pan with, and we've got some ham and cheese to put in it. Cool. So I'm gonna give the eggs a whisk. That's fine, there we go. Well, we need a bit more, that's probably what I so the pan's on the boiling plate, so it's, it's, it's a good idea to preheat your pans either on the boiling plate or if your ovens are on, you can always preheat them in the ovens as well. The removable handles are handy, it means you can just um, take the handle off, put the pan into the oven, heat it up nicely. Great, do you want to put some butter into your pan to start with, get that foaming? You've got a spatula there as well. With the non-stick, use a... Um, Use a silicon spatula or a non scratch spatula, or a wooden spoon is fine for this as well. That's fine. In you go. Do so you want the butter kind of foaming, but not before it browns? The boiling plate's quite hot, so that if you put butter in a pan on its own, it'll, it'll start to brown quite quickly. You just want it nice and bubbly for this today. Slosh the eggs in. Then almost immediately, once that egg starts to set, you start pulling it in from the sides with a, with a little spatula. And in a few minutes, it'll all be cooked on the bottom. It's the quickest, this honestly is the quickest way to make lunch for yourself or for breakfast. 
you know, a couple of eggs. This was two eggs, I think, wasn't it, Cam? Yeah. What have you got for toppings? Ham and cheese. Ham and cheese. What else would you put in for toppings? Maybe some potatoes. Yeah. Or some peppers. So what also is quite, what we do quite a lot is if there's a few leftover new potatoes, put them in the pan first with the butter and just saute them a little bit, tip them out to the side, and then you've got then saute potatoes to go into your omelette. They're pretty tasty too, aren't they? Oh, I think I'll add the, add the cheese in now. Good. What do you reckon an omelette costs to make? Uh, <laughs> I reckon eggs are about, and not a good eggs about 30p. You can get them for less, but they're not, the, the whites, the yolks aren't quite so good. So a couple of eggs, 60p? Yeah. Slice, um, slice of ham, about 20p? 20p. Bit, of bit of cheese, maybe yeah. about 20. Mm, what would be? A whole block would be like two pounds, and that's probably like an eighth of a yeah, block. No, not very much. Pound for the whole thing. Yeah, not, so that's even cheaper than McDonald's, isn't it? Yeah, McDonald's is deal. No, but in terms of quick and instant yeah. meal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and fresh and delicious. Good. Right. Have you got a plate at the ready? So I've got an ER3160. So we've got the induction hob. We've turned on the boiling plate today because it's nice to cook in the middle. But we could equally have used the induction hob to make the omelette. And if we weren't using, if we didn't need the top for anything else, we'd probably just use the induction. Um, it's quite warm today in, in sort of sunny Suffolk. So it's quite nice to be able to turn off the boiling plate. Thank goodness when we're finished. Boiling plate does it better than Do you? That is interesting. Well, there's less. You haven't got to worry about what temperature you've got it on. It just is the temperature it is, isn't it? Are you good to go? No, it needs longer. A couple of minutes longer. Brilliant. What else do you like making, Cam? Peas. Yes, you can. Anything you like, actually. There's a few more potatoes. Yeah. A few potatoes? Yeah. So this is, omelets like this are just, you know, even if it's just a really simple, literally, eggs and a bit of salt and pepper, that'll make a nice breakfast. But lunchtime, just open the fridge door and see what falls out. A bit of leftover roast chicken, some chorizo. Oh, yeah, chorizo. That'd be good. Brilliant. And this is, I like this kind of thing because it means that the kids can cook themselves. They can make themselves breakfast or lunch or even supper. They can make themselves something really quick without me having to make it for them. Um, and it's the kind of thing that you can use. It's a good skill in life to be able to make a perfect omelette. Brilliant. Right, while Cam finishes off his omelette, Laura, we might see if you've got any questions, actually, or any questions for me or for Cam or for anyone. I have questions. Um, I have had, uh, no questions have come in live, but I've had some questions that have come in in advance. So um, this is a good one, I think. Um, so what are the three things all teenagers should know how to cook for either when you're out and they're having to cook fend for themselves or when they leave home or go off to uni or whatever it is they're doing? What, what should children know how to do? So I think three things that are good, actually. How to cook with eggs is excellent. You know, start with an omelette like this is really good. Or be able to make a little frittata that's a bit more extravagant, that sort of thing. And then that leads you quite quickly, if you want to do something more baking, is to do quiche or things like that. So to be able to cook with eggs is brilliant. Even if it's just to boil an egg or do an aga egg on the top, you know, we just crack them straight onto the piece of bacon lied on the simmering plate to do a really simple fat-free egg. So eggs is good. Uh, the second thing I would do is get them to make soup. Do you know, because if you can make soup, here comes Cameron's omelette. Oh, looking good. Looking good. If you put it on there, George, you'll turn on, uh, Ed, Ellie will turn on the work to the camera. There we go. Now do what the chefs do, which is keep a bit back, keep a bit of your uh, fillings back to put on the top as a clue as to what's in it. There you go. Excellent. Well, you, can, yeah. you can eat that now if you like. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so eggs is good. So make soup, because if you can make soup, you can use a knife to chop the onions. You can understand how to saute something gently, and then you can you can make something quite plant-based or really simple from literally just, you know, some celery or some peas or some tomatoes or something like that. And if you can make soup, you can then make a curry quite easily or a stew or a casserole. And actually curry is great um, social currency, isn't it? If you can do a curry and a little bit of nice aga rice or rice to go with it, that's good. Um, and then the third thing I would do is to be able to cook with oats, actually, because then you can make porridge, you can make crumble. So a bag of frozen fruit, some oats, 
Um, even if it's your honest oats on their own, just about on top of frozen fruit, but mix it with some butter and some flour and some sugar, and then you've got crumble. So then you've got, if you've done your curry or your casserole or your soup and you've got crumble, you know, you've got a meal then. So yeah. uh, to be able to cook with oats. And then the final thing you get with oats, if you want to do some baking or you just want to make some easy, healthy, cheap snacks, make some flapjacks. So they would be my things. Yeah, that's great. And all of those things will feed a crowd as well, which I guess um, is, is useful if you're moving into halls or something, but equally uh, useful if you want, once, you know, when we're all allowed to be back together again and everything really useful for kids who are going to want to be social again very soon. Um, do your children ever cook for the whole family? Um, so I think it's a great thing to be able to cook a meal, actually. I think one of the things about cooking is making it rewarding. And there's nothing nicer than when you cook something, somebody said, this is delicious. Did you make this? You know, that's a yeah. real reward thing, actually. So the nicest thing to do is to, um, yes, get them to cook a whole meal, even if it's just roast chicken and some, you know, roast potatoes or something super simple. Um, because the moment they put it down on the table, if it, this is what I've made for you. Um, that's a nice thing. So, yeah, so that's a good we don't do it that much, but we should in the holidays. Certainly, we'll probably try and cook when. You know, there's more time um, and we try and cook in the afternoon rather than when everyone's tired and hungry at actual meal yeah. times because things take forever, don't they? With, when you're cooking with kids, it just all takes that much longer. So don't start when you're hungry. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And today is drumroll National Chocolate Day, which is very exciting. Yeah. And I, because um, uh, every day for me is National Chocolate Day, to be frank, but there you go. And um, so you're going to show us how to do some whizzy and exciting things with chocolate. Thank you. We yeah we are so chocolate and this is so I've watched quite a lot of family baking and children's baking and that kind of stuff and how to get people involved in baking and you know it's always the sweet treats are always the lure to get everybody into the kitchen and yesterday afternoon actually uh, I I I'd abandoned the kitchen and turned around and the next thing I knew there's Bake Off music playing two of the girls have made biscuits and Johnny sat there being judged so you know just let them make a mess um, and just go with the mess of chocolate sometimes to make and enjoy it so what I thought to do today is I know that loads of you, you really do not know how need to know how to be shown to make brownies but brownies are quite fun I want to talk about chocolate and using it and then we'll do some as Laura says some fun things with decorating things so first of all let's let's make brownies so for brownies we need three Three bowls, I suppose. It's like six ingredients, really. There we go. So one, two, three. Let's start with these. Okay, so I have some chocolate. So melt the chocolate. This is chocolate and butter melted together. These are, re there's no point in making brownies and trying to make them half-hearted. They are full-on chocolate butter, eggs, sugar, a little bit of flour and cocoa, and then some bits and pieces to make them fun. So I've got uh, 400 grams of chocolate, half dark, half milk, and 300 grams of butter. And I put it in a nice big bowl and I put it in a simmering oven for half an hour to melt. Um, and when you first take it out, it looks like nothing's happened because everything is in exactly the same place. But then that's the way the radiant heat works. It's not moving stuff when it's cooking it or blowing it around. Um, but then if you stir it, you'll realize it's all completely melted. Just melt it together and then stand it on the side, maybe for 10 or 15 minutes just to cool down a little bit. So that's our chocolate base ready. If chocolate ever goes grainy, it's it's got too hot. So this is the thing. So keep your heat gentle. If it goes grainy for this, because you overheat it, then actually just don't worry. You'll just have slightly chocolate chip brownies, which is fine too. And the same, put it into ice cream and make chocolate chip ice cream. Um, you can also do this on the top. So on the back of the simmering, on the back of the enamel on your agar is a really nice warm place. I've got on off top plates on my agar. So actually the tops of my agar often aren't actually that warm. So it's in the weather in the summer, thank goodness, it's great. I can have the ovens on for my cooking. I just turn the tops on when I need them. So that's why I use maybe the simmering oven to melt the chocolate or the warming oven that I have on this ER3 is a great place as well. Just pop it in there and give it maybe 45 minutes, have a stir every time you wander past. So that's the chocolate bit. Um, so then I'm going to add some eggs. So I've whisked together eggs and sugar and I used half, I've got six eggs um, and I mixed uh, half brown sugar and half white sugar. Um, let me give you a tip about sugar. Okay, so I, ch chocolate brownies like this need lots of vanilla. I love that really vanilla-y chocolatey 
taste. I think it really brings out the cocoa in this and the chocolate. So um, I, uh, but vanilla is really expensive. And if you're going to get your kids to make brownies, um, you know, it can be slightly terrifying getting, running the risk of pouring half a bottle of um, beautiful vanilla into uh, the brownies by mistake. So I've got a jar of vanilla sugar and it's got a couple of pods and these have been in here for years. And I just top up the sugar every time I've used it. And the next time I use it, it's got all that vanilla flavor. So I use probably half the vanilla sugar and half soft brown sugar, whisk those together with the eggs until they're sort of, um, I use like a stand mixer. So mix them together until they're quite fluffy. Then just mix it into the chocolate. You don't need to worry, we're not making chocolate mousse, so don't worry about bashing the air out of the eggs at this stage. Just mix them in and eventually you'll see the chocolate will start to come through the bottom. You can use less if the amount of sugar is terrifying. You can use you can use less. Um, and the thing with recipes like these is make it once. And if you think, Joe, you know, actually, I could cope with them being a bit less sweet than that, just cut it down by two thirds. That that principle applies for all sorts of recipes, actually. Uh, and particularly if you're cooking like European recipes off the internet or things like that, you find they often have a lot more sugar in them. Maybe our British ones do. So there we go. Here comes the chocolate. So then we want a little bit of flour just to give it a bit of body. So I've got 150 grams of plain flour and I've got um, four tablespoons, maybe like 60 grams of cocoa. You could use ground almonds at this point. So if you wanted to make, you can use gluten-free flour is perfect too. Gluten-free flour or ground almonds, just a little bit of something to give it a bit of body. But most of what's going to set the mixture is the cooking of the eggs. Um, I haven't sieved the flour, you know, life is really too short, but as with most things actually, just put it into the argon and it'll sort itself out. I'll just stir this through till it comes together. So that's your basic brownie mixture for me. Um, there's a lot of brownie recipes that have lots more flour in them and not nearly so much chocolate, but they're basically just like a chocolate tray bake. And that's fine if that's what you want to make. But today, as Laura said, it's National Chocolate Day, so we're going full on chocolate which means that they're good for a snack but they're also good for a dessert as well okay so that you'll see it sort of slightly thickens up a bit that's just the eggs and the chocolate in fact it's slightly warm just reacting which is great right so now we need a tin to put this in so oh muffins So I'm using today, this is a half size Arga baking tray. It fits on the runners. My favorite one is the one from the trio set, which comes either as hard anodized finish, which is like this. It's lightweight and shiny. It doesn't go in the dishwasher or the enameled finish, which is nice and hard wearing, totally goes in the dishwasher and actually lasts forever. I mean, it will do last forever, but so the trio set is excellent. The, the shallow one I use for just baking, maybe a couple of pieces of fish or fish fingers, the medium one for tray bakes, and then the deep one I use for my roast potatoes because it's got deep enough size to toss the potatoes in the dish without them flying outside. So this is, this is one, this, this is like the deep one actually. I've lined it with a piece of bake code light. Um, if you think that people might be diving at your brownies before you even get them out of the tin for this, then put in greaseproof paper actually, because um, just be careful, the baker lie will cut with a sharp knife. It lasts forever apart from when it meets a sharp knife. So pour in the chocolate mixture. <laughs> Resist the temptation to lick the spoon before midday. Uh, but you know, actually, that is the first, that's the first way to get your kids involved in cooking in the kitchen, isn't it? It's like, give them the spoon to lick. When they're tiny, put them on a stool and put them at the sink with a load of, with, a, with um, some washing up liquid and some bubbles in it to play at. And when they're a bit bigger, give them, and then give them a spoon to lick. And then before you know it, they'll be making the cakes and doing all the baking. Right, so that's my chocolate mixture. Then you want to make it fun. You can bake them like that and that's totally fine. But today I'm going to add a bit more fun. So raspberries will be good at this point or blueberries is what I've got going in here today. I've got 200 grams of blueberries. So that's quite a lot. Um, and then some white chocolate. So I've got a bar of white chocolate. We want to chop it up, which we'll do on the side of the worktop. 
Um, so cooking with kids, actually, there's a bit of a knife thing, isn't there? Is when to give them knives to use. And actually, I think an awful lot of things can be done with a pair of scissors. So it's a nice big chunks of chocolate. You don't have to worry about these being tiny here. I want biggish ones. Keep a little bit back. Do what the food stylists do. Keep a little bit back because we're going to want to use it on top. There we go. And that's ready for the oven. So bake them. So you want, we're using baking oven or baking setting here. I've got two temperature top oven. Um, it's on roasting setting because it's doing my frittata I'm about to take out. So if you want to bake in a roasting oven, you put your grid shelf on the floor, you put your brownie on top, and then you put the cold plain shelf, which is one of these. Every Argo owner should have a cold plain shelf. This is like a heat shield. Slide this onto the second set of runners, and you've then created a mini baking oven underneath, and that's where you bake the brownies. If you have a baking oven or you've got your own baking setting, cook them in there. And you might still want the cold plain shelf towards the end of the cooking time, actually. If they start to brown a bit too much on the top, but they're still mega wobbly inside, slide that in maybe after half an hour. Um, today, I've got, so my ER3160 is totally the best of all Arga worlds. It's got all the cast iron features. It's got cast iron top plate. It's got a cast iron roasting oven, cast iron simmering oven. I've also got a warming oven and a storage cupboard and an induction hob. And then over on the far side, which is where I'm going to cook these, I've got a tall fan oven. And that's what we use when my hot oven is busy doing something like frittata and or I was about to bake, make a roast chicken or something for lunch or for later. But I'm going to bake these in my tall fan oven on one, what am I on? 150 fan, which is like 170 conventional. Uh, it's also a really brilliant summer oven because it's like last summer when we moved here, it was like 35 degrees. So we didn't turn the cast iron ovens on uh, apart from when we wanted to cook. And then as it got cooler through September, we then had the simmering oven on all day and all night when it got really cold at nights. Um, and the roasting oven comes on with the timer. So it gives me, fan oven gives me like an oven that's hot in like 10 or 15 minutes for lots and lots of pizzas without having to worry about having any of the rest on. So I can kind of manage it through different times of year. Right, so once those brownies are cooked, which will be about 40 minutes altogether, it was this morning, but they might be ready quicker if you're in the baking oven. Um, so they look like this. Um, let them cool. When you, you know they're cooked, if they're still slight, you should have a slight wobble in the middle, that's what the recipe says. Um, so we want to just kind of tart them up a bit. And I've got my next glamorous assistant, has appeared who's going to come and help um so here we go so this is there's a few really good chocolate tricks okay i've got we've got between us a packet of milky bar buttons and a packet of normal chocolate buttons and these have been sitting on the back of the arga for about 10 or 15 minutes uh, and they're melted inside now so this is like an instant piping bag give it a little shake um i'm going to find the scissors and what I want to do is just drizzle my, um, now make a little hole to start with. So you want to do the white ones, you can do the next there if you like smiles. So what we're going to do, to snip off the corner, and then I've got my, um, my brownies are on a, on a cooling rack on a tray, because we can recycle any chocolate we don't use. But you can just squeeze, and you'll get nice back and forward like that. You don't often see dark chocolate buns in packets. They would be good. This is good if you've got a tray of biscuits as well, if you make some nice oaty biscuits that look a bit a bit too healthy. But then you want to make them a bit more decadent. Right, smile. So that's my milk. I've got a bit more in there. We might use in a second. I've seen chocolate orange. So squeeze it from the bottom so you've got all of your chocolate ready. It's really running. It's such a good trick, just melting it in the packet. This way, like that. Yeah, whichever, actually. I don't mind. Okay. Mm -hmm. I've got something else I'm going to go and get in the meantime. Brilliant. And you could go back the way if you wanted to. So that's quite a nice way to tart up your brownies. Remember we said um, you could keep a bit back. So you can just... Um, Scrumple up some of your white chocolate to go on the top. We might chop that with a knife. Then let me show you something else, which is fun. So the, um, let 
let's have a piece of Bakeode Lite. Bakeode Lite is brilliant stuff because it washes, you can scrape off any chocolate you're not using that's spilled over and you can recycle it, even if you just end up putting it into um, a jug and making hot chocolate with it. So this is the other thing that's quite nice to do. We can make some shapes. So there's a bit left in here. And we can just do, what should we do? Maybe say, pretend it's Christmas time when we do stars. Like that. See if we can get it to show up. There we go. Or we could do, um, say if we're quite musical, we want to do some treble clefs. That'd be quite good. You could do letters. We could write your name, Isla. So it's quite handy having this little piping bag. And the thicker you, the more of a hole that you cut, the more you'll have, the thicker a stream of chocolate you'll have. Um, and we could write oh, lots of things. You could write some more if you want smiles. So when they come out, let me make these brownies for just now. When they are, so then put them in, it's, it's really warm at the moment. So pop them into the fridge. And when they come out, they'll look like this, which means you can just peel off. We've done some little squiggles as well. You can peel off the squiggles. And you've then got, try and hold it where you can see it, a really nice little chocolate decoration. So all you need to do then is to take a square of the chocolate brownie, squirt of squirty cream on the top, pop in your chocolate shape. And that looks quite lovely and beautiful so um that's a good tip to do chocolate shapes like that and then the final one which we'll put on the top of our brownies so melt the chocolate again in the same way just on the back in a little in a little bowl or in the warming or the simmering oven spread it out onto a chopping board this is just a little one put it in the fridge or the freezer and then take a knife and just pull across carefully <laughs> Thank you, Eileen. It has been in the freezer because you just you can do it straight from the freezer, and it's going to make these really good chocolate curly shapes like that. Um, and they then you can freeze those individual curls like that, um, and they will then be lovely, just sprinkled on the top. You know, a simple chocolate tart and a big pile of chocolate curls. Then dust it with cocoa powder, and you are good to go. So. There's a few ideas. So drizzling across the top of the brownies, making little curly shapes like I was doing, um, and then putting the little chocolate curls across the top of anything. Um, the final tip, whatever you're decorating with chocolate, it's lovely to put a big thick dusting of cocoa powder on the top of the raw cocoa, because that gives it quite a nice bitterness. Often you end up with lots and lots of sweetness, and that's why we use dark chocolate for a lot of baking. Use good quality chocolate, use dark chocolate if you can, um, and then sprinkle with cocoa at the end. Um, there we go, that's it. So we'll leave Smiley to do a few more shapes. Um, I'm going to take the frittata out and, and see if you've got any more questions and things, actually, Laura. That's us done with cooking for just now. Oh, my goodness. That's amazing. I want to come over and put it all straight away. Um, so Jenny's just said that's a great idea. I think she means that uh, making the shapes, which is really clever. Um, and I've got a few more questions that have come in in advance, but I want to see what's happened with the frittatas first. Yeah. So these are so much fun. So they smell delicious and they're like, you know, they're like a quiche, but without the pastry. Um, you like, the life is quite carby at this time of year. It's really easy to have sandwiches and all that sausage rolls and things. So these are just lots of pure protein, really. So they've really puffed up. They look amazing. Um, so that's about 15 or 20 minutes in they'll go down a little bit once they are cooked but there we go little individual picnic mouthfuls on a plate with a bit of salad out and about yeah that's great that's really great that's just like the perfect lunch um so with brownies what what other different things can you do um so i love them with nuts you know but some people not everyone does nuts so if you so the best for me i would be having um, like some roasted hazelnuts would be nice, either just sprinkled on the top or mixed through them. If you want to roast them, roast them in the roasting oven, give them five minutes, no more, and then just just uh, rub off the skins. Do it outside and let the wind blow the skins away. And then you've got delicious chopped hazelnuts. You can keep those in the cupboard or the freezer then for ages and just chop a few on top of porridge or going into brownies like that. 
Um, you can use peanut butter in your brownies, that's nice too. The nuttiness is good because it adds a bit of fiber and a bit of oomph and, and less sweetness. So it balances the sweetness of the brownies. Some ground almonds instead of the flour would be nice. Um, other flavors and things are good to do. Instead of, the, instead of the blueberries, you could have raspberries. You could have pears, actually. Mm. And, you know, often a tin of pears any time of year is jolly handy to go into brownies. Either if, if your kids like pears, fine, chop them up. If they're not so fussed about them, leave them whole and then they can pick them out. And I have a husband that's not very into pears. So I think anything your people are a bit doubtful about, leave them large and then it's easy for them to pick them out and see what they are. It doesn't make them suspicious that you've hidden. If you're gonna hide things, you have to puree them and hide them completely. Um, other flavors that are good, you could put in some like raw chocolate, cocoa chips. You could put in um, orange is lovely as well. Grate the orange zest into the chocolate mixture um, and then sprinkle a little bit on the at the end as well. So yeah, they would be my thing. Some nuts, some more fruit. Um, if you're not into nuts, you can put in blobs of tahini, actually. That's nice. That's sesame seed based. That's like sesame seed nut butter almost. Um, blobs of that through it is nice as well. You could swirl it with a um, cocktail stick to make little patterns. Oh, marvellous. And Jenny's just said muffins, are the frittata muffins are a great idea, especially picnics. Now she's back in France. Oh my goodness, we're all so envious. Oh. Mm. To leave the country. Um, <laughs> Um, so, a few more questions we had in advance. Um, what age do you think children should begin cooking? Um, so, I think what is really good is the more chance they see people, they copy, don't you? So, the more they see you in the kitchen, the more they think that's a normal thing to do. And the more, see, the more they see food being prepared at home, the more they think that's a normal thing to do. And when we have quite a lot of cheating in our family as well, but there's definitely quite a lot of real food cooking happens. So they've seen cooking from a really early age. I think, so Isla is 12 and actually she'll use a little sharp knife quite happily. I might watch if she's using the grater. I don't think we'd let her near the mandolin yet, but that only comes out for making celeriac remoulades or thin cucumber salads. Um, yeah, we don't need to know about the mandolin just yet. Cam is 16 and he's confidently making omelets. He would confidently make anything he would follow a recipe um he would cook for function he would cook because he needs to eat the girls isla would happily cook and bake for fun as well as for sweet treats um but i think even you know even at, at you know five or six get them alongside you get them to do the bits get them to do the stirring you know you can stir the chocolate and you can lick the spoon um and even tiny actually say put them at the sink with a with a sink full of water and bubbles washing up bubbles and let them just play with the water and play with the wooden spoons and things yeah and I also think that I, I had children who um were nervous about new flavors and new textures and I think getting them involved really kind of helps build that confidence when they see how it they see how it goes in in its raw state I think it kind of builds their confidence in eating um you have been amazing I um, just want to go and bake brownies now for the rest of the day. <laughs> um, the, um, you've been a lovely audience. Thank you very much for watching. Um, this will stay up on Facebook and I think it's posted to IGTV over on Instagram as well. If you want to watch again and the recipes are going to be posted um, for you to use yourselves at home. Um, Nay, where can people follow you to keep up with what you're doing? Um, so the so in... Yeah, there's a little, I do a little bit of social media. So I'm on Instagram as nayhansel underscore inspiring cooking. Oh, thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. On Facebook, they pretty much match each other. Um, in the autumn, hopefully we're going to have in-person, certainly in-person courses from a new little bit of my kitchen I've got here. Uh, and if not live streams um, as well as the other stuff we do. So there's something very exciting. I've got an L-shaped kitchen. There's something very exciting happening in the far corner over there, which has started to appear, which will be good. So lots of cooking happening in the autumn. We'll do a little bit through the summer because it's nice to keep going. And actually lots of us are at home. So it is really, it's a really good chance to just do things a bit more slowly than term time, which is a bit hectic. So yeah, we'll see you, see you all again sometime soon. Oh, brilliant. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny, for saying thank you. And thank you, especially to Isla and Cam, who uh, were yeah. marvellous. And have a lovely day, everyone. And we'll see you very soon. Bye. Brilliant. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Oh, we're still here. <laughs>